So I find myself asking the question, is it wrong to drop a light novel series and then decide a long time later to pick it up again? Just maybe. Hello everybody and welcome to a review of volume number two of Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon Side Story Sword Oratoria Volume 2, which I will just call Sword Oratoria from now on because dang. This one by, of course, Fujino Omori, who is the author of Don Machi. We'll just call it that because wow. This video would get very long if I had to say the full titles of all these things over and over and over again. Uh, <laughs> so this is the spin-off series that focuses on Loki Familia, in particular Eyes Wallenstein, the woman who has captured Belle's affections. And you know what's actually funny is like when you read this book and when I think about the main series and everything else, as much as Belle is kind of like a little bit starry-eyed about her, it really doesn't come across as just like that puppy love or anything like that. Like it's like he sees her as this complete person. This, it is an idolized kind of thing. It isn't just a, wow, she's so beautiful. No, it's like, it's like she epitomizes his ideals, her strength, her stoic appearance and behavior, all of those things, right? It, it is his beacon that pushes him. And so it's kind of interesting to get a series that focuses on said beacon, especially when in the main series, like, um, she's pretty emotionless, uh, you know, and I think that's, uh, and again, it's because the book is told so much from Bell's point of view that Bell himself just is kind of flustered and doesn't exactly know how to take her. So, you know, we're kind of on the outside, but in this one, of course it is told mostly from her point of view. Now, it's all third person. This one doesn't include the first person bits that we get in the main Don Machi series when Belle is the point of view character. So it's a little bit of a different reading experience. And this volume now, I read the first volume of this. I said, well, you know, it's okay. It's all right. But, you know, it didn't blow me away. And I didn't really know just how much it would stand on its own two feet. Uh, how much of it would just be like a, you know, side, truly a side story to the main series. And with so many light novels, I kind of decided not to read any more. Uh, now I did say in my last video that I went to my list on Patreon and kind of said to them, Hey, you know, for stuff and giggles, how about we, uh, you guys tell me what you'd like me to pick up that I have not read in a very, very long time. And this one, uh, not too surprisingly was a favored title because of course the Don Machi series itself is pretty freaking awesome. Now this one, I'm talking a lot about Don Machi, the main series, not so much about this one. Let's get into this book. Let's talk about this book. Cause you know, I read it obviously, uh, because you know, my, I listened to my patrons. I, I do. Um, this one, I will say, here's the thing. This volume has me a lot more convinced that I would be interested in reading this series than volume number one did. Volume number one felt very much like a, hey, let's just kind of show some weird stuff that was going on at the same time as volume one in the main series. This one starts to actually develop a story. We have a actual antagonist figure introduced in this one and one that if you have any investment in eyes at all and this and i would say that the first volume did an okay job of it this one does an even better job of kind of heightening the mystery of eyes's backstory uh then this one grabs you a lot more the whole idea of just who is this antagonist how does she tie into what does she know about eyes and her backstory and you know where she comes from why is eyes's ability named what it is uh i won't get too much into that because that's kind of spoilerish um 
it's it does a lot more to convince me that this is a story unto itself that can stand on its own two feet separate from the Don Machi series, especially now that I'm reading it so far removed. Like, um, reading the afterword in this book, uh, this volume released basically within the same two month span as Don Machi volume number five. And I gotta be honest, I do not remember probably 60% of the small inside stories or, oh, that's where that came from kind of stuff. Because honestly, so much incredible crap has happened in Don Machi since volume five that I hardly remember it at all. So, <laughs> so there's a lot of, I think, inside stuff in this that I don't even get anymore, you know, like the real big stuff I do, but, um, but there's a lot of, I think a little smaller sort of story elements that I just don't remember. And so at this point, then it's not like I'm experiencing this just as a filler to fill in the blanks of, Oh, what were they doing during this? Or what were they? No, like I'm experiencing this kind of as its own series now, because I really am pretty separated from the events that this book ties into sort of in the main series. So I think in that regard, like in some ways, it's probably better that I held off for a long time to read this, to see if it kind of stands on its own. And like I said, this volume, it does a pretty good job. I, I don't think it's still as strong as the main Don Machi series. Uh, I think that... You know, there is still that appeal of having the underdog hero, uh, that there's sort of this, uh, there is a lot of work I would say in this book to do, to start to build comparisons between eyes and bell, uh, that, that we sort of get an idea of how these characters, even though they seem so vastly apart, that there is something that they recognize in each other as being the same or similar, or, you know, in a way that they are kindred to one another. And I think that too, the other thing about this one, and the one thing that I do remember from the Don Machi main series that I always kind of wondered was that when eyes approaches bell and she's like, so interested in him, in his development and how he's getting stronger so much faster and everything else. And it always struck me as being a little odd and sudden. And I wasn't exactly sure, just like, there didn't seem to be a payoff in the character that made me go, Oh, I totally understand why she's into this. Or like, in some ways it almost just felt like a Deus Ex Machina kind of thing of, Oh, well I want eyes and bell to spend more time together. So let's just make, eyes all like curious about Belle's ability. That's what I thought. But this one, this book, it makes that a lot different. It changes that impression and suddenly gives a lot more texture and meaning to Isa's interest in Belle and how it is that he's growing so quickly. And so in a lot of ways, like, so I would say that particular plot point makes this a really good sort of complement to the main series, that particular point. Cause like I said, in the main series, I really didn't think that that was built up or paid off very well. But when you read this volume, it makes total sense. In fact, it makes it a far bigger sort of thing and, and makes the payoff of that a lot more interesting. And finally in this one too, we really get some cracks in that, sort of stoic blank slate kind of emotional behavior that eyes puts out to the world. And that I think is probably one of the things that got me most interested in this volume. Uh, I think the thing about bell that I've always loved about that main series is how it builds that character up and yet still makes things hard for him. It forces him to make difficult decisions, you know, breaks him down to his core character that he must always stay true to no matter how hard it is. This one, I kind of feel like it's a bit different, obviously, because we have an adventurer who's already at 
that point where Bell is trying to get to in terms of the strength and the ability, uh, you know, even being able to financially support herself and her familia, being able to contribute and be a leader and be respected. Like that is his goal. He's chasing that. And it's interesting then to see this, where we have that same character who we start learning a lot more about what's going on in her own head. We start realizing that there's a lot of sort of psychological trauma bouncing around up there that drives her in a way that is entirely different than Belle um, and makes her in that sense a far more interesting character. I, I will say that like, you know, the Don Machi series, the main series, Eyes has been the really pretty blonde who can kick ass character, right? Like there hasn't been, I don't feel that there has been enough focus on her as a character to make her really interesting. There are far more, as far as I'm concerned, far more interesting characters in the main Don Machi series, uh, female characters than there are in here. Like, I mean, even Seer, the, the waitress to me is a far more interesting and fleshed out character in the main series than what Eyes has been. And so I, I kind of question whether this series now is created to justify that love interest. Um, but I will say that this volume did finally kind of break that character down a little bit, finally started like hammering away at that sort of armor that she has around her emotions and everything else, started revealing a little bit more of this person underneath who in some ways is kind of frightening and so horribly driven to the point of almost self-destruction. And it makes the character a lot more interesting. So in that regard, I find myself, you know, as, as much as I make hard choices about what series to keep up and what series I don't and everything else. And, and I did after reading the first volume of this, I was like, you know what? It's good, but eh, it doesn't really grab me. Uh, you know, whoop de doo there's new monsters. They don't know anything about. Well, this one having an antagonist who is truly an antagonist, like truly a challenge, even for some of the greatest warriors that Loki Familia has. The questions of who is this person? How does that person know things about eyes that nobody else seems to know? What kind of journey chasing after this character is eyes going to actually have? This is the stuff that makes things interesting and compelling to me in terms of light novels. This is the thing that makes me invested in a character to see them broken down and to see them develop and change and grow. I think the only thing that kind of has me leery about it, um, about continuing with this series is that, you know, I have read up to volume number 10 in the main Don Machi series and eyes is really not around a whole lot. Like she is not a character that is as present in that series. And so it's very hard to see if the events of these books are having an actual effect on her character. Now, as far as I know, in volume number 11 of Don Machi, we might see more of eyes in a very interesting situation, which I very much look forward to reading. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I guess I just kind of sit there going, like, how much of this should I get emotionally invested in? How much is going to be the payoff? Um, I believe that the first four volumes are the arc, as far as the writer Omari is concerned. Uh, I do know that the anime apparently covered the first four volumes. So I'm kind of thinking maybe that I will try and read the, at least the next two, just to kind of finish this arc. Uh, apparently, well, I mean, not apparently, but in May, volume 10 comes out in Japan. So like this series in terms of number of volumes is almost caught up with the main series. The main series, the most recent was only 13. So, wow, it's a lot of Don Machi commitment, but you know what? I love Omori's writing is really, really good. He very much writes very decent action sequences. Um, again, like I said, the whole character arcs, uh, are very strong in the series. I mean, Domachi most definitely, especially after having read 10 books, the, the character development and arc of Bell is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, I'm, like I said, in this volume, I start seeing elements of that with eyes and that kind of has me thinking, mm, maybe I should find some time to, to read more of these as I look at my pile of like 
oh my god, I think I have like 15 books now. I, I thought I was starting to make some headway and failed epically, epically failed. So with this one, like I said, it is still, of course, you've got the really decent writing of the Dalmachi series because the same author, obviously. Uh, the characters, I would say, um, I'm not as invested in the minor characters, the secondary characters of this one. Like, not even really a little bit, to be honest. Um, however, it does seem to be building a bit of a cool character arc for eyes. And and like I said, it, it does... I am curious to see what it is that kind of attracts her and Belle and, and where things are similar and different for them. That, And I mean, I don't know how their relationship's going to pan out, obviously, in the main series, but it could be interesting to see. So if you're invested in eyes a little bit or you want to kind of get some more Don Machi in your life, I mean, it's not a bad series, definitely just based on the first two volumes. This volume definitely has it set to be, I think, a better course for the series, not just a... You know, oh, whoop de doo it's a Loki Familia side story. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, pretty good volume all in all. And uh, that, that, that does have me thinking that maybe I'll pick up at least the next two so I can finish this arc. So for my next review, I am going to be reading a volume number two. The good people at Vertical were nice enough to provide me with a copy of Strangulation. Zarigoto series volume two. Kubushimi Romanticist. This one, I have heard some very good things from people. Uh, of course, this was released by Del Rey years ago, and Vertical has now since picked up the rights to it, uh, since Del Rey has kind of gone gefunked with the whole light novel thing. Um, and they, as far as I know, have taken Del Rey's translation and then cleaned it up a bit, you know, done, done some more editing and stuff like that. And now of course are releasing it. I really liked the first volume decapitation. So I'm pretty excited to check this one out, especially when I know a few people have said that this one is actually better than the first volume. So that'll be my next review. So if you love light novels and you're brand new to the channel, you should subscribe. I do two to three reviews every week, as well as a weekly countdown of the top 10 best selling light novels in Japan. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.